You know, when you think about innovation, you think of the innovator. Yeah. You think of the the person who's kind of sitting down and just, you know, coming up. They're coming up. They're the Einstein. They're just sitting there in, in their loneliness, you know, maybe reading some stuff, talking to a few people, and they're coming up with some new ideas. And that's what pushes people forward, right? That doesn't seem to be what we see either looking at the historical record, which is kind of the cultural fossil record, if you like, or what the models are suggesting. Instead, what innovation is, is, you know, Joe Henrik and I call it a collective brain hypothesis, right? It's a, right. it's a collective process where really the computation that discovers new solutions isn't happening in here. It's happening by people picking up ideas from one another and recombining them in the head of a particular innovator. So if you think of, you know, and, and let's say we didn't have Darwin. Yeah. Darwin came up with, with evolution and, and we can see how he came up with it. He recombined several ideas. He was a, he was a breeder, right? He was a pigeon breeder. So he understood artificial selection. The genius in evolution by natural selection isn't in the evolution. Uh, it isn't even in the selection. It's in the natural. How did he know that nature could select? Cause he had read Thomas Malthus. He knew that the pace at which plant matter grows is polynomial. And the place at which animals grow, because it's limited by land, and the pace at which animals grow is exponential, you know, like 2, 4, 6, eight, you know, sorry, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. And those two lines will meet. And at that point, the plant matter will out uh, will be less than what is required for the amount of animals around and onward to, you know, to, to carnivores. And that means they're going to compete with one another. And he realized that in that competition, it wasn't random. Some are going to be better suited to that competition than others. And then he traveled to these diverse island archipelago and he recombined that idea because he saw evolution at work. He saw these finches famously that matched the nuts on the different islands, right? And he read, uh, you know, vestiges of the natural history of creation. And he saw that over history, we can see these kind of small changes. So he saw artificial selection. He knew that we could turn a wolf into a puppy. He knew that we could do, you know, turn pigeons into all these magnificent creatures. He recombined and came up with evolution. Now, here's the thing. If we didn't have Darwin, if Darwin... You know, like a time traveler goes in, shoots Darwin when he's a kid, we would still have evolution because of Alfred Wallace. Alfred Wallace had the same experience, also a breeder, also traveled to these island arguments. He came up with the same time. And he's what he is the reason that Darwin published because Alfred was like, hey, I've got this idea. I think this is how it works. And Darwin's like, oh, crap, I came up with the idea, you know, five years earlier. Right, 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 right. Yeah. It's out there. There's an interesting uh, tendency, I think, with a lot of these innovations, too, that they they seem to sort of emerge simultaneously, right? And I'm, I was exactly. going to look at Matt Ridley's uh, book on innovation, sort of maps out a range of different things where different people in different parts of the world have the same idea around the same time. How does that happen, right? You know, like, why Why is it? And of course, it's not everybody, right? So sometimes when I say, you know, like, innovations aren't by the innovator, they're like, oh, yeah, but not everyone is Newton. You're right. Not everyone is Newton. But you know what? Leibniz also came up with calculus. So, you know, not everybody come up, comes up with calculus, but Newton and Leibniz, because they're reading the same material. They're exposed to the same ideas. They're recombining in the same way. Thousands of years, no calculus. Suddenly, boom, two guys, calculus. What's going on, right? And and I think if you if you really look, if you're an entrepreneur or you're an academic or, you know, you... If you stop and think for a second, we are somehow convinced of our own genius, but also terribly af afraid of being scooped. There's a tension there, right? Like if you think you're thinking seeing so far ahead of everyone else, what are you worried about? No one's going to catch up with you, right? But you are because you know everyone's reading the same stuff. So they're going to come up with similar ideas. Beauty at Work is brought to you by Templeton Religion Trust. If you enjoyed this clip, go check out the full episode. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps get the word out about the show. Thanks and see you next time.